we're there in park and the last time I shut down this engine welcome back to little Mythic classic and right here behind me on the floor is the new engine that will go in my daily driven xj6 which means it's time to rip the old engine out and put this one in the goal for today is to try and get the old engine out and just have the engine bay open and then there will be some work on the ground like swapping transmissions over and a lot of other things but we'll get into that a little bit later now let's go outside and let's see if we can get the car in the workshop all right let's see if it starts up it probably be the last time or definitely the last time this engine starts up it's been sitting out here for what is it like a week and a half something like that but uh let's see it's usually pretty good at firing into life <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna let it just run a little bit, warm up a tiny bit, and then uh, we'll get into the workshop. It's been about two minutes, so I think it will be fine. It's really, really cold outside, and I don't really want to stall it. And it doesn't run the best, of course, with a crack in one of the cylinders. Once again, it's getting up that slippery hill like we did with the XJS. Can be a little bit troublesome sometimes, but uh, I think we should have some some luck. It's all about momentum here in the beginning. And there we go. In case you're wondering what is next to my workshop, that is a stable. My wife has horses, so there are three horses that live in there. This is a lot easier than with the XGS because this thing has power steering. The XGS should have it, but it's not working. And there we go. Turn it over a little bit that way, where the engine crane is. And we're there, in park. And the last time I shut down this engine. I actually started it up once more and disconnected the fuel pump. As you can hear, it's running out of fuel. I'm gonna remove the uh, harbors, of course. It's a little bit easier if they're a little empty of fuel. There we go, that was really the last time that engine shut off. All right, so there is quite a bit to remove in order to get the engine out. I also have to remove the front bumper because I don't want to have to lift it over that and you know leave drop on it. It's pretty easy to remove. I will have to, of course, remove the bonnet, uh, the crossbars here, top of the radiator support, the radiator airbox over here, I will remove the carbs as well as a unit just because I don't want to damage them if something happens when I take it out. I will leave the manifold on, disconnect the exhaust, drain the coolant system, disconnect the prop shaft, disconnect the shifter linkage, and disconnect the speedo cable. And uh, that should pretty much be it. Removing the bonnet is really usually a two person job. Putting it back on is especially a two person job. However, you can remove it yourself. And I mean, it's, it's not that bad. It's not really that heavy. What I like to do is I take a piece of really soft cloth. This is, uh, I don't think it was called, but it's what you put underneath, uh, you know, on, on tables to protect them underneath the tablecloth. So I fold it underneath the bumper here. So the only thing that's gonna happen really is it's gonna go down a little bit onto the bumper here, but this is three layers of very soft fabric. Nothing's gonna happen. And let's connect the electrics for the main beam lights. And disconnect the locking mechanism here. I have it pretty much off, it's just loose at the moment, so I can get that off. Then it is three bolts on each hinge. I've already removed one on each of them. And you have these big springs up here. 
I find the easiest way to get the springs off is to get a piece of pliers on here and just pull them straight up and get the springs off. But wait to do that until you're basically being able to hold it. And then you can really hold the back of it sort of with your back and get it off. But before you do anything else, prepare where you're gonna put it. Put down some soft material somewhere where you're gonna put it. I have soft material under there. I'm gonna put it against that wall. So plan everything out. But now, I'll set up the camera and I'll try and get this off. I'm gonna start with one of the springs on this side. Bam. There we go. That can just dangle down there. But now you gotta start holding on to it because it can start going down. This one out also. There we go. And now, as you can see, everything is pretty much loose. So now I'm going to start on this side. And yeah. Like I said, just holding it with the arm and loosening the bolts. Got the last bolt out on this side so now. I'm just gently sort of laying it down on that soft fabric on the bumper. And then moving over to the other side. One thing I forgot to mention is before you do any of this, make an outline around each of the hinges, each of the plates on the bonnet, I've done that with a permanent marker just so that I can get everything back really easily. Now I can remove this thing, which I really should have done a little bit earlier, but oh yeah, I forgot the bolt. Just took out the last bolt. Now everything is completely loose and just sitting there on the fabric. You can grab it with both hands, lift a little bit up, and shake some away. I haven't done anything crazy wrong. There we go. Okay, bonnet is off and safely stored, and just look how much room we have for activities now. Second time I had this one off, I had it off when I had the hand off the first time. Second time I left it on, but uh, it's a good thing they take it off sometimes. Well, I mean, it's not a good thing, but it is nice if someone has taken it off before, because that way you know that all the threads and everything are fine. And I need that on here. It's also a common place for these things to rot down there. This bonnet is in really good shape. But I am going to, just now while it's off, put some rust proofing everywhere I can't get to. So the next plan is drain the coolant. While that is draining, I'll remove the front bumper. That is pretty straightforward. And then, yeah, it's just choose one end to start with. I will start up front with the radiator and all of that. And probably just work my way back. I do have an oil cooler as well. As you know, this is a Series 3 engine that they put carbs on in a Series 2. So they did use the oil cooler and all of that. And I will use that on the Series 1 engine that's going in here. So the oil uh, housing all of that. So that's another thing I will have to remove as well. And I'm gonna see sort of how and when I will do that. But let's start with draining the coolant, getting the bumper off and the front of it, and then we'll move forward. While that drains and makes me want to go to the bathroom, just time to remove the front bumper. It's quite simple. You've got a mount there. There's a mount up behind there on each side. 
and then you have the bottom part here as well. So it comes off as one piece, pretty straightforward. Same with the cross member here, that's pretty straightforward. You got some wiring up across here and got some connections in here. So remove that, disconnect that on both sides. And it's just, you know, some bolts up here, some here, which uh, seem to be missing on this. I'll have to find some new ones. And then you just got the hoses up here and that, and this top lifts off. And then the radiator in the bottom is held in place with uh, two studs going down so there's two nuts to remove there and then you can remove that along with the fan shroud so I usually try and remove this with the radiator so undo it down there and have it all together sort of come off sometimes you can do that sometimes you can't but uh, usually it's easier to keep things together and not take it apart in too many pieces especially when it's all going back on again front bumper should be completely loose now but I have actually remembered one thing. I haven't had it off on this car before, but I did the stuff to the engine before I left it on. So um, some of the stuff was quite difficult to get off, but uh, I managed and now I should just lift it off and not scratch anything. I'm gonna put that somewhere safe and then we can continue with, yeah, let's do the radiator top support. Top radiator support is off. Now uh, we can get a closer look at getting the radiator out. The radiator is just held in place in the bottom with uh, two studs going through, like I said before. Got top hose there, bottom hose over there, and it should lift straight out. The shroud here is attached to the sort of cross member in the bottom there, and. Uh, after that, get the shroud out. We can attack either getting... Well, we can leave the fan on actually while we remove the engine and have an idea what I'm gonna do with the oil cooler, but I think I'll leave that for now. We'll move on to getting carbs off and the exhaust off. Radiator really, should be completely loose now, but there may still be some coolant left in it. I did leave the bottom hose on the radiator. So, let that pour out. Carbs are ready to come off. It's really easy to take them off as a whole unit with the back of the air filter housing. So then it's just uh, eight nuts on the intake. And you don't have to take them off, but it's just, they're sort of the most valuable thing on one of these engines, especially when the rest of the engine is sort of junk. And I've just rebuilt them when I got this car back on the road, so they're still in very good shape. Be careful with them. That was just one of those brackets in the back for the turn springs. And I have the door open because even though I've tried not to spill any gas, I haven't really yet. It's sort of very easy to do that, and I want to take them out instantly. And I realized I forgot one thing. There is a pipe here for the um, hot air into the AED. I need to remove that. There we go, now it should be much better to get it out. I'm just gonna put my finger over there, plug it, and bring it outside. If you wear out any drill bits, keep them, especially the eight millimeter ones, and you know, 10 and 12, and all the ones that are hose sizes, because they're great for plugging you know, like a fuel line here, because if you put a bolt in there, you will damage the inside of the hose, and uh, this hose is pretty much brand new. I wanna reuse it, it's only a year old, and, um, well, ask me how I know about the bolt thing. Well, uh, I have found pieces of rubber hose inside carbs. So definitely be careful with that. So now I can just lay this, I can just lay this down here to the side for now and move on to more things. So next thing will be 
exhaust on the other side simple thing then we're going to remove the back hoses here and I haven't really decided what I'm doing with the oil cooler yet I don't have any new o-rings for that so I'm going to either I disconnect that there and get new o-rings or I just disconnect it and remove everything as one piece get to the side then it's just a couple of vacuum lines under here and the bottom radiator hose there the other side of it power steering lines or I may just remove the power steering whole pump assembly and keep that in the car I haven't really decided yet I'm gonna remove the alternator just because I don't want to damage it or anything else on the side here I will leave the suspension tank in place and uh, yeah then it's going underneath the car of course and removing the transmission mount or just disconnecting the transmission mount the prop shaft and speedometer cable and the gear selector I removed some of those things we talked about I've disconnected the hoses here in the back but I think I will also remove the heater valve it's pretty much brand new it's a year old and it's kind of easy if you're not too careful I mean it can happen the engine can slide back a little bit while I take it out and I don't want to crush that they're pretty expensive and uh, I also started to remove over here you can see the alternator got a little bit left to remove but I realized something I'm about you know time wise about halfway done with pulling this thing out it doesn't seem like there's a lot left but it's the stuff that's left is stuff that takes that's fiddly um, you know underneath disconnecting the transmission uh, exhaust takes a while to take off really boring um, you know alternator things like that power steering I have decided to just remove the cooler uh, lines from the old cooler and I'll get new o-rings but um, yeah so I think I decided this will be a two-part video so this will be the end of part one but I'll continue working so you'll see part two most likely as the next video on the channel and in part two we'll lift the engine out but I realized it will be a very long video anyways I hope you guys enjoyed it so far and pretty soon we'll see it out of here and over here you see you can see the other engine that's going in which uh, I have realized I will need to move some things over the water pump is different and I want to keep my fan my fan clutch works well and everything so I'll have to order a water pump gasket I'll do that when I get inside all the hoses are less than two years old so I'm going to reuse all of them I'm really careful getting them off so I will reuse all of that and then a few other changes will have to happen as well this is a series one engine with the series one cam covers so I will not get to use the crossover and preheat of the carbs I will I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do about the radiator top support if I'm going to use the one I have or I also have a spare one for a v12 I may use that one because that doesn't have the pipe up top and um, yeah, it's a cleaner look and I'll use a series one air filter housing so lots of planning ahead but uh, anyways I hope you guys liked part one and stay tuned for part two and so if you like this video please give a thumbs up share it with your friends if you're not already subscribed to the channel please do subscribe to the channel it really does help out a lot and I think that really soon we'll see this XJ6 back on the road my goal is to be out and driving uh, my goal was before Christmas but I think that's definitely going to happen but uh, I just want to go out and enjoy it listen to Christmas music in it but I think while it's in here we'll fix a few other things as well that it needs to do into it you know besides swapping out the engine but until next time I'm Adam and this was Lumafet Classic I'll see you soon